Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with After the Last Airbender Book 3 episode number 3 and 4. Okay, the previous two episodes, um, we started the third book and it started in a very, what can I say, uh, not good way. Aang was uh, unconscious for quite a while and after he uh, got up, he realized what happened and he was like you know he was disappointed he thought that again he was the one who messed up and he did not want others to you know like clean up his mess all that stuff was happening and he kind of had a little bit of uh you know like was a little bit moody at that time but as like you know as like time went on and he kind of lashed out ran away but by the end of it he was able to realize that you know everyone is there with me and yeah we'll we'll surely be victorious next time so you know like the whole thing with ang got resolved but zuko is troubled now he's troubled by like, all this time he's wanted his honor back he got his honor back but now he is frustrated about the fact that his honor is a farce basically a farce because um azula was the one who actually manipulated him again to just put him in the pedestal so that she could get out scot-free if something uh you know if something else happens if if, if ang somehow turns out to be alive so that she can go away scot-free and zuko against take the fall uh, again takes the fall so that's azula's plan like and zuko's not happy with it and at the same time he's frustrated about the fact that uh, the only person who used to listen to him that is his uncle is now a prisoner and is not talking to him like obviously what else do you expect like iro has been very patient with zuko and even though like you know like I, i've also said that zuko is like a troubled person he's never gotten you know, proper what can i say guidance from the from his childhood so all this time I've been saying that, you know what, yeah, whatever he's doing, let him just figure it out little by little. But now I think that, yeah, like it, it's been a while that this whole thing is continuing. Zuko trying to get his honor back. And this time I think he went a bit too far by actually uh, not betraying in the sense, but kind of leaving his uncle alone and letting him get captured. The only person who used to be his ally, you know, when his like you know his dad was the one who you know, kicked him out Zuko was the only per uh, Iroh was the only person who was like a father to him and he did not like you know like help him at all when he got captured so my opinion yeah let's let's just let it let like, the way it's happening let it happen I am I hope at least Zuko himself now figures it out unless and until he himself figures it out this whole honor thing is going to keep him tied down and yeah i think whatever is happening is for the best let's see what happens that was that and then the next episode we had a fun little like you know happy little episode where ang again went to like you know started going to school like uh you know which is befitting his age and he had like made made friends had quite a bit of fun kind of taught them you know like uh freedom of expression how to express themselves like the fine nation children they are being suppressed they can't dance can't do anything all that stuff so he told like taught them freedom and i don't know hopefully something good happens after this and they kind of helped ang to get out, out of that place when everything went wrong you know when the teachers came in so yeah let's that was a fun little episode the second episode so yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode number three of book three after the last airbender so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here to sync it to whichever is a preference let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go okay let's see what happens <coughs> Hmm. 
all right let's see what this episode brings okay let's take this out avoid any spoilers Ooh. Oh. Right. The painted lady. Okay. Oh my god, poor Appa. What are they doing? Fishing? Paka's fishing? <laughs> He's playing hide and seek. Um yeah. Oh well like Oh no. Don't, oh no, don't lick it. <laughs> yes, I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh my god, Saka. Wow, that's his schedule? What? <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Um Okay, I guess. <laughs> Deal with horns. <laughs> Whoa. Doc? Okay. Wait, you're wearing Fire Nation. Wait, isn't that dress Fire Nation dress? So, wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh yes. Toph is kind of anxious because she cannot. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, you can't ask food to these for these people. These people themselves can't yeah don't have enough food. Maybe water bending? Katara can't do something? I don't know. Saka That's true, you know. Um Yeah. Nope. Can we get food here? I don't oh. What? What the? Oh, okay. Wait, you... That's not how it works. <laughs> okay, what do you have? Oh, frogs. Oh, those are fish? I thought those were frogs. Ugh! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this person. Oh. Damn, his hand is... I don't know, I, I thought maybe Katara could help, you know, because water bending. Uh, I'm not sure. There you go, that's what I was saying. Oh, but I'm guessing the river is big, so she can't do it. In Negle?
Um, that's specific. Hmm. Um. <laughs> No. What? <laughs> Saga. Oh my God, Saka's going crazy. <laughs> I don't blame him, you know, because so many, so much things. Oh, wait, what? No, he thinks that he we can't go because Appa is sick. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Saka, you're being petty now. Yeah. Is it? Oh no, infection. Infected or something. Momo, don't lick that! What the? Now he'll get sick. Yeah, what the? Yeah, they're happier. What happened? What? Painted lady. Oh. Oh, that's good. Like, they got food now. Okay, Saka. Factory. Oh. Yeah, no more food or potty breaks. What? <laughs> um, that's a mutated zombie fish. What the hell? <laughs> oh, what the? This is the painted lady? Wow, she really is healing. Maybe she's a waterbender. She she was you know kind of going on water and she can heal. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, is that just a sec, who's that? Oh my god, Doc! <laughs> What's that, clams? Wait, was that Katara? I don't know. Um... <laughs> Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Wait, was that Katara? I I don't know. I wasn't able to. It is Katara. Oh my god. 
I wasn't able to recognize her properly because of the makeup. So she knew the legend of the uh, painted lady. That's why she, I'm guessing, is was wearing the makeups and everything. It's Momo's fallen. <laughs> oh my God, Ang doesn't know. Oops! Run! Um. Oh. Yeah. Damn, Ang has really improved so much. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. I don't couldn't Katara. Oh, I guess she could not do it. Uh, like you know, in front of everyone because. People, oh no, people realize who, that's why, you know, like she's wearing the disguise and at the middle of the night she's going and heating everyone. Oh boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um yeah. Yeah. Oh, she just okay. She just took the disguise for that. Oh, she didn't know about the legend. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> Secret here. What? Oh, destroy the- oh, there you go. The thing that Saka was saying. Oh, I, I, I was saying that why couldn't she just take the pollution out? But unless and until the factory is destroyed, yeah, it won't work. Yeah. Okay. Woo! <laughs> Hang looks evil. It's like, ha ha ha, look at this. <laughs> Woo, nice. There you go. Factory is destroyed. One thing I'm thinking, um, will this really help? Yeah. Oh, oh, oops. <laughs> You're late. Oh, she knows, okay. Wait, did... <laughs> she also ate. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Saka, come on. Huh. Um... <laughs> Whoa, what the? Who is this person? Oh no! Oh no! 
Oh my god. Oh no, the villagers will be in trouble. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, he's a bit of a <laughs> goofy idiot, that's just it. What? Oh my god, it's funny. Oh no. What? Um, okay, oh boy. Well, you'll see her soon enough. Oh, my God, what the? Oh, great. Nice. Well, not only the painted lady is here, but his paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better run, or spirit magic will haunt you forever. <laughs> There's a hapa growling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Arpa's having the time of his life. <laughs> wow. Oh. There she is. Oh! Wait, is that a rope? Wait, our Aang is underneath. <laughs> Runs away in fear. Damn, the special effects. Like the smokes and everything. Well, better run. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Now <laughs> he doesn't. He can't even run away now. The boats are gone. Won't work. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, better run. Oh, they came back. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> brothers. Um. Um. Oh no. Well, does it matter? What? No. What? Oh, great. Wow, these people. Maybe not that much, but... Yeah. Maybe clean the river? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Oh, great. What? You have another brother? He doesn't even care, he's just in front of them. Oh no. And... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, and leave it. <laughs> oh my god, what the... <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. There you go. Nice! Wow. It took a while, but there you go. Phoenix. <clears throat> wow. Oh, wait! There really exists a, exists a painted lady. Oh. oh. Kind of reminds me of UA, you know, like, especially the dress that she was wearing. Painted lady, you know, uh, the, the same dress that UA, uh, UA wore when she became the moon spirit. And she also has like a little moon um, painting on her forehead. <clears throat> so, yeah. Anyways. Okay. <clears throat> That was a nice episode. Um, we get to this village, which was obviously suffering <coughs> because of the <coughs> fact. Now, in the beginning, I was like, I was thinking, like, why doesn't Katara, um, you know, like clean the water? Because she can easily do it, you know, like water bending. And she was even doing that. I was, I was thinking, like, why is she not doing that? And then I thought, like, okay, maybe because, like, you know, the river is a huge source of water body. That's why she like you know she was she wouldn't be able to like handle that. But then later on I kind of realized that no, actually the reason was not that. The reason why she was not cleaning the water was because the factory was producing the pollution. So unless and un until the factory goes like away or shuts down, even if she cleans the water, it'll go back to the same polluted state after one or two days. So that's why she was not doing that. I, I realized that uh, later on. So, as Saka said, the source, the main source was the problem and you need to destroy it. So, yeah. Okay, so, here, in this episode, uh, one thing we can see is Saka is a bit too, like, hasty nowadays. Like, you know, especially because of the whole eclipse thing that, you know, like, we don't have much time. And as I said, I don't blame him because it is, like, the only chance that they have got. And what did he say? Like it was for eight minutes, I think the eclipse will go. So they really need to have all the preparations ready and be ready before that eight minute. 
so that's why you know like every day is like a very important thing for them now that's why saga is so um concerned about losing a single day and that's why he was you know kind of getting so agitated he was like oh no potty break no only two potty break uh, have food while having your potty break all these stuff he was saying <laughs> oh lord and uh, yeah like that's why he also kind of like you know was saying that yeah we don't have enough time to you know help every people that we meet and in a way he is correct you know uh as he said that i'm not leaving them like, you know I'm, I'm not heartless or stone like, you know cold i'm just a realist i'm realistically thinking thinking of this and as i said in a way he's correct you know because if this is like the only chance they have of actually getting an upper hand on ozai this eight minutes so if by like it's good that they're helping all these different people but if while doing that their main goal that is defeating ozai if they somehow miss the only chance that they have during the eclipse and miss that chance because they were helping some other people it would be a very big disaster you know like the thing here that we can see is as saka said the target the main source you should destroy that so that this does not continue in a similar way this whole thing if you think of it as a single thing the main source of everything the fire lord ozai if you defeat him everything will stop so in a way like the, just like how katara decided to destroy the factory here to help these people saka is thinking of it in a broader sense he's thinking of the main main source that is fire king uh, fire lord ozai he is targeting that person and destroying that person will stop everything so in a way saka is correct but you know um <clears throat> it is kind of a uh, bad feeling if you see people suffering and you know that you have uh, power to stop that and you don't do it because like you know because of some other problems it is kind of a bad feeling you know and uh, ang especially i'm sure that he also was a little bit bothered by this because ang is the after you know <clears throat> he's supposed to save everyone <clears throat> so i don't know how they'll be able to make this few days that they lost here i think two or three days they lost here uh, hopefully they're able to make that up but yeah it was nice that they helped these people <coughs> <coughs> help these people out of this mess <clears throat> and okay so <clears throat> that was that and then there's this <laughs> like the thing that actually i wasn't able to realize like, i was able to realize the whole <clears throat> painted lady thing by the middle of it but one thing that I really wasn't able to realize is <clears throat> Appa's sickness. I really thought that Appa was sick. You know, I thought he, was, he got some infection or something. But <clears throat> that was also something Katara did. That's one thing that I wasn't able to... <clears throat> I wasn't able to um, predict. But... <laughs> <clears throat> when they said that the painted lady came and helped them. And the next scene where we see that lady suddenly come through the water at the first at the first my first thought was okay wait a minute she's <clears throat> surfing through the water is she a water bender are, are we going to like meet a new ally or something <clears throat> she gets in she starts healing and i was like okay this girl really is a water bender then i was i was like wait a minute water bender a person who can heal don't you already know a person like that who is just you know over here situated here <laughs> then I realized, wait a minute, is this Katara? <laughs> At the like, you know, when they showed her face, <clears throat> I wasn't really able to recognize her because of the <clears throat> painting in her face. <clears throat> I was a bit suspicious. I was like, wait a minute, why are they showing her face like that? And at that time, I thought like maybe this is Katara, and then I thought that well, maybe not, you know. But 
as we get to the next portion where they're talking with Shu, Katara's <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Katara's actions, you know, the way he, she was acting and behaving, kind of gave up, gave, gave away everything. And I realized that yeah, that is Katara. And uh, yeah, so Katara did not know about the painted lady. Um, what do you call it? Painted lady legend, but. I think like you know like probably the first night when she went and helped them I think she probably just like you know put a disguise put the hat and everything probably did not paint herself just went in and helped them and kind of snuck away a few people saw her and said that oh this is a painted lady and <clears throat> then they started in the you know the next day when Katara and Aang goes to the not Katara and Aang all of them goes to the village they're saying oh the painted lady came and <clears throat> they're showing the little you know <clears throat> idol statue and I'm sure after seeing that statue Katara thought wait a minute this is a good way to actually trick them and not let them know that I am a waterbender and so that's why she you know like I, I think like from the night after that she started putting on the paintings just like it was painted on the little statue idol statue and <clears throat> she really took the painted lady uh, <clears throat> disguise started going and uh, after that the next night uh, Aang was able to like you know recognize Katara <clears throat> and uh, yeah all right that was that and then <clears throat> okay so another thing so <laughs> what happened to Appa like like Ang did say that I don't think anything is wrong with him. It's just that his <clears throat> tongue is purple. Like I'm thinking, like why was Appa like that? Like you know, kind of laying down in a weird way, <laughs> putting his tongue out. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Like that that thing was kind of con confusing. That also kind of tricked me. That because of that, I thought that Appa maybe Appa really was sick. I did not actually realize that it was actually Katara that did something. Like, you know, like, Appa was, like, laying down in a weird way. I thought, okay, maybe he got infected or something. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think Appa was just, like, chilling like that. He was just like, you know what? I don't want to move. <laughs> Let me just lay down like this. <laughs> and Katara was just, like, feeding him berries at night. <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe Katara said something to Appa. Maybe Katara said that, you know, Appa, I'm going to feed you these tasty berries. Like, you know, I need you to do something. Just lay down and don't move. You know, when Aang and everyone comes up to it, just, just don't move. And I'm, I promise you, the next, like, you know, day, I'm also going to feed you berries. <laughs> Maybe Appa understood that and Appa was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just do that. He was just laying down in a weird way, <laughs> not moving. <laughs> Oh my god, and up like you know Katara was feeding him berries. <laughs> oh, anyways. <clears throat> Alright, that was that. And then after the they destroy the factory. Now here's one thing that actually kind of I thought that it's going to happen. I was thinking, may wait a bit, is is this going to go in this direction? Like I thought that maybe the the factory was polluting the whole place, but maybe it was also helping the people here in some way. You know? I don't know why I kind of thought that and uh, when Katara destroyed the factory I thought that wait a minute maybe this will actually backfire like you know the, the pollution will stop or maybe maybe it will actually affect the village in some other way I was kind of thinking something like that but then we saw the people come down and like you know like the firebenders and all and then I realized that nah there's nothing is wrong here they like you know they were really polluting the place like, there's no positive thing that was going on here everything was negative the the whole factory was actually a big negative thing like negative influence on this place and there was no positive influence in any way whatsoever so <clears throat> you know and then we the painted lady come in with the special effects and everything and oh and the whole thing with Saka as well oh my that was nice when Katara said that like I will not uh you know what did she say show my okay. 
à, rất mm, she says that no i will never ever turn my back on people who need me yeah this thing and yeah saka also realized that yeah you know what maybe i am being a little bit too big of a jerk here you know like we we can't save these people but just because of that like you know because of time we're not doing that and Saka also realized that yeah <laughs> Kataras was like was like oh you do have a heart Saka does have a heart we know all know that but it's just that he as he said he's a bit of a bit of a realist you know we've already always seen that you know with his <laughs> With his very clever, like, you know, sarcasm. Like, his sarcasm is the best part of the show. I love Saka's sarcasm. It's just so good, great. It's, it's like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and, you know, and his realist, as he said, like, as he himself said, he's a bit of a realist. You know, the way he actually sees everything. You know, he's, he's not that, oh, we're going to save the world. We're going to... He, he thinks everything in a very realistic manner. And that is definitely needed you know just like how you need ideals in your life in the same way you also need realism and i think this this whole like you know ang's uh, gang <laughs> ang's gang <laughs> ang's gang is very balanced you know for example saka is a realist um <clears throat> katara and ang you know in a way are idealistic Toph is kind of in the middle, I think, somewhere, you know, between a realist and an idealist, it's kind of in the middle. It's very balanced, you know, you need each and everything in small little quantities. And it's, it's really great whenever someone goes too much, you know, into each, each's path, each's direction. For example, if somehow Aang or Katara goes too much, you know, kind of goes too deep into the idealistic path, Saka will stop them. And if somehow Saka, just like in this episode, goes too much into the realistic path, uh, Aang and Katara will stop him. And, you know, it's kind of balanced in such a great way. And that's what he was actually doing in this episode. He went too much into the realistic path. And Katara was like, you know what? No, like enough is enough. I'm going to help them. And yeah, that was like a correct decision. At least I think so. I, I hope nothing like the schedule, the schedule is messed up now. But hopefully they'll they'll be able to compensate that. <clears throat> All right, that was that. And then the next part we see Katara, like you know, destroying, uh, defeating the bad people, and <clears throat> them recognizing Katara. And the villagers were nice here because I thought they were probably going to, I don't know, getting nasty to Katara after they realized that it's not painted lady. They were kind of doing so at the beginning. But then they said that, yeah, like, you know, like, you did help us, so, yeah, I don't think it's correct to actually lash out on you. And that was good, you know, like, hope, like you know, it was nice to see that they're not too blind, you know, they, they actually realized their own mistake and they were, like, you know, they were like, yes, like, you helped us, like, thank you for that. <clears throat> and, yeah, and in the end, we see uh, the actual painted lady. Now, as I said, like, you know, the painted lady really reminds me of Yue, especially her dress. And, you know, like, there's like a little moon symbol on her head as well. I don't know if those, they both are somehow related or something. But, yeah, who knows. Alright, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. So, okay, this was third episode um <clears throat> all right let's check out the next one this <clears throat> okay so episode number four let's get started so i'll be putting the subtitles and the time right here sync it to whichever is a preference let's get started all right so here's the countdown three Two, one, go. Okay.
Huh. All right, let's take out my headphones to uh, avoid spoilers. All right, let's see what this episode that was like the previous episode was really nice um okay saka's master wait saka's going to get a master what <laughs> oh my god whoa yeah whoa what is that oh my god it just um should we go there oh whoa yeah do you have water here okay there you go <laughs> um ooh, oh okay <laughs> no you're <laughs> no you're here for our you know moral encouragement yeah nice wow momo momo is doing better <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Ooh, nice. Damn, look at that. Saka's like, oh my god, so many cool things are happening. And I'm just, uh... Okay, I, I think I re realize now why the name of this... Name of this episode is Saka's Master. Wow. <laughs> ah, poor Saka. Oh my god, what happened to him? Oh, great. Oh my god, I, uh, I cannot see him like this. Wait, who's this person? How dare he? What is... Oh. Oh! <laughs> I know. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Damn, I know. Hero worship. <laughs> ah, Saka. What the hell is that? No, Saka is the brains of our team. We forget that. No, he's the brains. Come on. <laughs> Um, and, and, Osaka doesn't realize, like, his plans has helped most of the time. Not most, but all the time. Well, he's feeling better already. Nunchucks. Uh, um. That's dangerous, Saka. Whoa! 
Yeah, that's pretty sick. Oh my god, that's really cool looking. <laughs> nah, that's really cool. Oh, oh, maybe not. Yeah, for now. Maybe in the future? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, look at Saka. He's having so so much fun. <laughs> Ooh. What is that? A sword? Yes. Damn, he looks like Iro. This guy. What the hell? He looks like Iro. What? Yeah. True. Hmm. <laughs> Badger moves, okay. All right. That guy looks so much like Iro, the shopkeeper guy. Whoa, Iro's training. Yeah, oh my god. Iro will be all buffed up. You know, when Zuko comes to meet him, Iro will be <laughs> all jacked up and everything. <laughs> um. Huh. Almost. Him? Damn, it's a new nice house. Huge place. Whoa. Hmm. Uh. <sighs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> yes. Damn. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, you Saka can do it better, you know. Yeah, Saka can do better. <laughs> wow, Iro really is all oh. Damn, I was joking when I said that maybe he'll be jacked up and everything. Maybe he really will be. Okay. No, don't. 
Don't take it like that, Saka. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um that's an interesting way. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> Saka. <clears throat> wow, this is beautiful. Um, paint it. Oh, an instant. Okay. Yeah, instant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> rainbow. Uh, Oh, okay. He can handle it better, kind of. Oh, no. Yeah, no distraction. Okay. I think Sak will be good at this. He's intelligent, you know. Hmm. What is it doing? Ah! Wow! <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. He is improving, you can see that, you know? There you go! Nice! Oh! There you go! <laughs> okay, that's good. Wow! I will. Okay. Oh no! It's just, you know, kind, kind of... He'll act like a... Yeah, there you go. He'll act like a... Complete madman. <laughs> oh my god, I <laughs> Oh, okay, let's hear it. Wait, that Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> you make your own sword. Wait, make? Okay. Like, real sword? Metal sword? How do you even make that? Okay. Wait, this is kind of like, I think, like, kind of reminding me of a video game I played. Special material. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Taka's like, what the hell? Yeah, anything. <laughs> it's blushing. Okay. Oh, interesting choice. The meat. Oh my god. He is getting jacked. Oh my. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Okay. As I was saying, I think I played a video game where there's like a section where they say like, you know, you, you need to make a sword, choose your material. I can't remember which one it is. Was it Skyrim or something? I can't remember, but... This really reminded me of that when he said that, you know, Saka, you choose your material. Hmm. Yeah, Saka's working hard. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, I was also unsure, you know, but he really, yeah, he really proved himself. Yeah. But his application of... Oh, look at that! <laughs> Shining. Yeah. And that's a cool looking sheet as well. Nice. Uh, oh wait, he's probably feeling guilty of... Yeah, he, he did not... Uh, I think he already knows that. He already must have realized that. Whoa! Oh, I thought maybe... Okay, maybe he's just testing him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yap around as long as you want. God, why is he... Wasting food. Ooh. <laughs> oh! Yes! Oh my god! Look at him! <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I oh my god! This is one of the best characters of the show. <laughs> oh god! Oh. Uh. Oh god. Yeah, Saka's intelligent as I said. He has really weird ways of like innovative ways. <laughs> Oh my god. Whoa. <clears throat> yes. Oh. 
Uh. Oh boy. Woo! Wow, this is one of the coolest episodes, I have to say. Oh! <laughs> Come on, Saka! Oh! Oh! You have a chance! Oh! Um... Oh! There you go. Wow, this guy's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lee, <laughs> true. Yeah, exactly. He's a, he's an actual master, you know, like he doesn't discriminate just because he's a water tribe, you know, he values talent, not race or not which nation he is from. Wow. Oh, this guy. Okay. Five. Oh, he's one of the white. Oh my God. He's one of the members. Faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, true. Katara. <laughs> also, this guy is one of from the uh, the the, uh, the Lotus. You know the one which uh, Iroh went to in se season two, I think. Went to them for help, like the secret society or something. Oh, he's one of th those members. So Saka will be able to go to them, I guess. No, because he has a tile now, lotus tile. I have to say, this is probably one of the best episodes. I just loved it so much. It has so much character development, both for Sokka and Iro. Iro himself was a beast from the beginning, but this episode just, like, you know, like, transformed him into something completely different, a complete, like, you know, abs a, a more of a beast than he ever was. And... Yeah, like, it's fantastic. This was one of the best episodes. Oh my god, like, the character development in this episode was off the charts. Like, completely. Now, when we started this episode, you know, like, when Saka was like, you know, like, let's go to the master and let's go for training. And when he even started the training, I also thought, I, you know, how I thought this was going to go? I was thinking, like, okay, maybe he's going to go there, kind of train. A little bit learn something a little few more things he'll probably come back and still like you know go back to being our usual Saka he's going to use his intelligence and everything he won't learn much from here you know I, I thought it would be something like that but yeah he proved us all of us wrong you know even the master said that like you know at the beginning I was a little bit skeptical but then you yourself proved yourself and he was able to actually realize his talent you know his unique way of doing stuff 
and you know like that was that was really great so okay what was the master's name just a minute um okay uh okay Tian Dao okay that's his name Tian Dao the greatest sword master and sword maker in the fire nation history okay so Saka goes to this master now at the beginning when you know like the guy was like oh so from which town you're from where you know maybe you've mastered everything maybe you're the best person you know in the town and you're just here to learn from the best because you are the best or something like you know he was saying something like that um uh Okay, this this portion. You're the, uh, where is it? Let me guess. You've come hundreds of miles from your little village, where you're the best swordsman in town, and you think you deserve to learn from the master. This thing, you know. I, I feel as if I've I've also heard this the same thing. I think probably in some different animes where there's like this one person who is the best. From his or her village and he or she starts on a journey goes to somewhere else to learn from the best and even improve more and this guy is saying that oh so what are you like you know where are you from I'm sure he has heard a lot of people say that and come to him and say that yeah I'm the best from here so I think you know what maybe I am a genius so I think I'm actually worthy enough to be taught by you who yourself is another genius people with these type of haughty attitude you know probably came to him and said and when pro when he started training them he realized that you know what this guy is trash yeah he, he he or she can't do anything just just leave like i'm sure he has been disappointed like this multiple of, amounts of times but here saka says that no like i have been all, all over the world but i I have no talent. Like you know, I I I'm I'm not worthy enough. So I want to teach from you so that I can become worthy enough. Like that's what he said. You know, I have to prove. I would lo love to prove my worth, and that's what's probably really picked his interest. You know, the master's interest. And <clears throat> as he said, he was able to realize Saka was from the water tribe from the beginning, but he never said anything because you know. Uh, like he he is a true master this is one thing that really shows us that he's a true master a true master is someone who actually values talent and hard work you know they they don't care about where you are from who you are you know if you are a person who has something within them you know some kind of hidden talent something some kind of hidden untapped potential and you know if that's you know like a master actually sees that he does not see who you're from where you're from you know he, he can be a water tribe member from anyone from the air nomads anyone from the fire nation earth nation anywhere but the main like you know requirement here is if he is actually uh hard working and if he has talent if he's worthy enough to be taught so and that's what shows that this guy is a true master and <clears throat> okay that was that and then we see suddenly see <laughs> iro acting like a mad person completely you know like at the beginning when they showed us that like, you know like he was drooling and everything and they're like throwing food in front of him and he was like wobbling and like eating that i was like oh my god what happened to him like look at what they made him you know like they just like completely like now he's all gone like we like this iro i like you know like this is not the same iro anymore but then he suddenly 
starts smirking and we see that nah he's just acting and he's like you know training and everything making other people acting like a clown in front of everyone but you know in the from the inside he he is ready he's getting ready to just kick ass <laughs> oh my god that was funny <clears throat> All right, and then Saka's training begins. Now, here's another portion where I thought that it is going to go in a different direction. I thought, like, as like you know, as we saw, Saka was kind of messing up one all the time. No, I thought that wait a minute, is is this really going to go well? This is probably like you know all the things that the master was telling him. For example, that scene where he says that take everything and like you know, f like uh, in a moment's notice, and just like you know, imagine it and like draw paint it. All that stuff and when you know like he said that the calligraphy <laughs> express yourself and he just painted himself and started you know bashing his head into the <laughs> uh, paper at that moment i thought oh, wait a minute the, is this going to go any any like you know, is this going to go well enough like what's going to happen i also kind of felt a little bit doubtful here i thought maybe saka won't actually learn much he's probably going to go back you know empty handed and probably we're going to you know like it's going to probably end in a way where we see that saka is you know actually good the way he is like you know no need for him to just train and gain some more uh, <clears throat> gain uh, anything else is good the way he is i thought it was going to go in that direction but i was also quite pleasantly surprised where like you know where we even though he was messing up with all these different things and kind of you know making unique innovative ideas and i was surprised to see him actually improving so uh, while he was fighting you know like using the sword like the first time he was completely bad at that the next time he, he was able to kind of do that but he got distracted but the next time he was able to disarm his opponent and that's when i realized that no they're going in a complete different way they're actually trying to tell us that even if Saka is not actually going by the book, he's he's doing everything in his own innovative way, and that's what Saka is. You know, he he's actually um, what can I say? He does not go by the book. That's what Saka is, and that's what they are showing us here. His talent is something different. You know, his talent is actually innovation. And he can even apply that not only to like strategies and all the other stuff. We've already he's already proved himself a lot, like you know, in many times in that section. He has proved himself a lot of times by you know using his innovative ideas, his intellect to actually defeat enemies. And he's like the master strategist in a way of the of Ang's gang. So this time. We see not only he can do that, but he can also apply that in swordsmanship, in different other stuff. And yeah, we saw how he was able to so cleverly, you know, use that in his swordsmanship and just defeat the different characters. And then, like, you know, like, it's also intelligent for him to actually use the meteorite you know ma material like I, I kind of forgot about that for a second there you know i i completely forgot that the you know the meteorite actually stru struck and he said that yeah i have a perfect material and he brought that and i was like yeah that's really intelligent <clears throat> and the sword looks cool so cool like you know like that black sword oof one of the best and then Saka obviously was feeling a little bad because you know he has actually lied to the person who taught him so much you know he was feeling a little bit guilty and <laughs> master kind of tricked him he was like yeah fight me <laughs> and yeah they started fighting and that was truly one of the best fights Saka was so innovative in their in his own way you know, he used his environment in such unique manners. It, it was just, it was pleasing to watch the whole fight. It was so pleasing to watch. And like, uh, in one section that was happening, and another section we see Iroh kind of training himself. You know, <laughs> he, he, he takes off his robe and 
it's like all buffed up i i, I was actually really I, I really was joking you know in the beginning when we saw him started training i was like <laughs> Like you know, when like the next time Zuko will be here, Ira will like you know be all jacked up, like you know all buff and everything. And <laughs> I was actually joking at that time. <laughs> that really happened. In the, in the, in the end, as we saw, you know, like as I <laughs> took off his robe, he's just like you know <laughs> all like you know all in shape, and like no more like you know. Uh, what do you call that? No more belly and everything. No more fat. He's just all toned, and like, you know, eating the prison food and just training. <laughs> oh boy, that was really great. That was one of the best sections. You know, like both of those sections were being shown one after the other, and it's so cool that whole portion. Like you know, Zuko's por uh, I uh, Taka's portion and Iroh's portion. and uh, yeah that was that and then in the end uh, he actually gets the lotus style which obviously is kind of interesting in a way where actually we see in this episode that Saka and uh, Iroh both of them their like you know their this training sections were shown uh, one after the other and at the same time in the end Saka also gets the lotus style which also connects him to Iroh in a weird way you know because Iroh also has that he is also a member of that society so it's interesting to see that like you know like this this whole episode was kind of like Saka and Iroh and the in the end as well the Lotus style is also something that connects both of them in a way I guess from now on I don't know if I don't know how he's going to use this Lotus style like like the master did not tell him that this is something that you can use in this way he just gave it to him so who knows I'm kind of wondering how he'll be able to realize how to use the lotus style we'll probably get to know in the future and uh, yeah okay another funny part in this episode was another thing that we realized is that yeah Saka is actually <laughs> actually really one like no one can take Saka's place you know his timely um witty remarks you know this timely way of joking this timely sarcasm yeah we'd re if if like you know like we'd really miss it if saka is not in the gang <laughs> katana kind of tried to do that but she was terrible at it so no that's that's definitely for saka saka is perfect for that <laughs> and in the in, we see like you know in the beginning saka saying that Oh, I can't do anything, you know, like you guys can do so many things and I'm just and you know that, that that's what I, like, I was thinking like nah, like it's not like Saka kind of thinks like this because he's seeing so many like, you know, like Aang, Katara, Toph doing so many cool stuff and he thinks that yeah, I can't do anything like even Momo can do stuff better than me. So like, yeah, like I was thinking like no like his actual worth is not in that his worth is somewhere else He's he's actually Very intelligent his innovative ideas. That's what helped Ang's gang a lot of time you know? and <clears throat> Yeah, she, he he's definitely one of the Most one of the most important parts of this team like everyone's important, you know all the characters in this in this team Toph, uh, Ang, Katara, Saka, Appa, Momo as well. <laughs> uh, they're all they're all important in their own way. So yeah, and as I said, like I I really would like you know I think like the amount I'm enjoying this show I think like forty percent of it is because of Saka, you know. And the other 60% are, is of different reasons, obviously because of Aang, because of the storyline and everything, the different characters, and Zuko as well, you know, and Azula, like I am also putting Azula in one of the reasons why I'm really enjoying the se second season, because Azula is another reason why, because she's still just such a great, not great character, but a great villain in a way, like, you know, she's just <laughs> too evil, and that's what makes it good in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and you know like 
And I think like 40% of the reason why I love this show so much is because of Sokka. I never thought I would like him so much. Like, you know, in the beginning, I remember in the first episode, I thought, oh my God, this is, Sokka would probably be another annoying, like, you know, side character who's just going to annoy me <laughs> all throughout the show. But boy, was I wrong. Sokka really completely changed everything. Like, I like, I love his character so much. Like, Sokka is 40% of the reason why I love this show so much. His timely remarks, his sarcasm, his jokes, and like you know his his witty ideas his innovative ways perfect and now he's even more like you know better he can he can fight with a sword now in such a cool manner i think like the upcoming episodes will be even cooler where whenever Sokka is involved you know he's going to use his brain and just fight with his sword like wow i'm looking forward to it so that's it so like that was that was really great i loved Sokka and iroh's character like they were developed enough characters and they decided, you know what, let's just give them more character development. There you go. <laughs> and yeah, this episode. One of the best episodes. I love this. So that's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to Avatar The Last Airbender Book 3, episode number um, uh, 3 and 4. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. So that's it, guys. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender Book 3. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.